to know that the Lord is able. Yeah. 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 Everything but right. fail. Amen. Right. What a blessing today. We are grateful to be in the house of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Where prayers can be heard and right. mercy can be found. Amen. Right. Amen. Grateful for the worship experience thus far. Especially these, this music ministry. Amen. Amen. The Lord has blessed us in worship. And I like it because, amen, I could feel worship going on. Amen. And nobody was trying to be, amen, show or star. The real star has already come in. Amen. That's Jesus Christ. Amen rising star. Amen? Amen. God bless you. We don't want to keep you long, but um, we do want to share with you a word from the Lord. Um, we, we are grateful for, amen, Pleasant Green, and for all of the visitors and for those that we haven't seen in a while. It's a blessing to see you. Amen. been in the hospital and the Lord has blessed you yes, to be sir. here. We are grateful to see all of you today. Amen. There is a word from the Lord in the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 5. We're going to kind of do some scripture reading gymnastics a little bit. We're going to move a couple places. Not far, but we're going to move in the same neighborhood. We're going to start with Joshua chapter 5 and we're going to read through verses 13 through the end of the chapter, then pick up in chapter 6, verses 1 through 5, and then we're going to look at, in that same 6th chapter, verses 20 and 21. Now, I know that sounds complicated, but you're going to see that it fits together. Amen. Amen. One thing. Amen. Uh, Tamara and Taylor. Taylor and Tamara. PKs, they call those folks preachers' kids. Amen. Amen. I don't know. You heard of Mary and Mary? Uh, it sounds like TNT to me. I don't know. It's, an, it's an explosive combination. We're grateful that uh, they chose it to be on the Lord's side. Amen. 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 Joshua chapter five, verses thirteen through chapter six. Verse 5. And I'm going to read, since I know where I'm going, amen. I'm going to read in your hearing from the King James Version of the Bible. Pray that you would read along silently with me, starting with Joshua chapter 5, verse number 13. If you're there, say amen. 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 The scripture says, And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes. And looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What said my Lord? unto his servant. And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. Chapter 6, verse 1 says, Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given unto thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do this do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns, and the seven on the, and the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times. 
and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horns, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Now turn in that same chapter, if you would, look at verse number 20 and 21. It says, so the people shouted when the priests flew, blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. Verse 21, and they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, and ox and sheep, and ass with the edge of the sword. Amen. Amen. From those two chapters from the text, we want to talk to you from the subject, Overcoming Life's Strongholds. Overcoming Life's Strongholds. Overcoming Life's Strongholds. Amen. Are y'all going to pray with me? Overcoming Life's Strongholds. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your goodness, grace, and mercy toward us. We thank you for what we've already experienced in worship thus far, what our eyes have seen, ears have heard, and our hearts have felt. We're grateful for the presence of your Holy Spirit. We invoke that presence again to manifest himself through our preaching. Lord, use us according to your will, according to your word. And we might declare, thus said the Lord, Lord, empower us to preach that we might do it with boldness and with accuracy. And a passion is from on high. Bless us that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts would be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you are strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. And to him be all the glory, honor, and praise. And every heart say, Amen. Amen. <coughs> Overcoming strongholds. Overcoming life's strongholds. We know that there are some strongholds in our lives that inhibit us and keep us, restrain us from becoming the people of God that He would have us to be. And a stronghold is a fortress or an area occupied or dominated by a special group or entity. And strongholds have a tendency to keep us away from or to keep us or to keep away from us that which would be or should be ours. In the lives of believers, strongholds are obstacles that keep us from claiming what God has already prepared for us. In fact, if if, if, if we're ever to uh, be what God wants us to be and have what he wants us to have, we have to first get rid of some strongholds in our lives. And I bring that up because that's what the city of Jericho was in the lives of the nation of Israel. It was a stronghold. We just talked about that in Sunday school class. And so many of us should be familiar with the text and familiar with this historic account. This stronghold um, was standing in between God's people and what God had prepared for them. Oh, y'all gonna walk with me a minute? I won't be here long. History tells us it was a great wall city. Jericho was surrounded by two massive Store um, on stone walls, and the outer wall was six feet thick and 20 feet high. The inner wall was 12 feet thick and 30 feet high. There was a 15 foot guarded walkway between the two walls. Yes, and from a military standpoint, it was practically impenetrable. 
by force. And it was an obstacle that stood between the children of Israel and God's promise of the land of Canaan. And before they could possess the promised land, they had to deal with Jericho. They had to deal with this stronghold. And I believe if we would be honest today, we would have to admit, like Jericho, there are some strongholds in our own lives. There are some obstacles uh, in our lives that are entrenched in our lives that prevent us from going all the way with God. And you don't have to look at me funny. All of us have strongholds in our lives. All of us have obstacles that refrain and restrain us from becoming the people of God, men and women of God, that God would have us to be. Are y'all gonna pray with me? Yeah, yeah, no matter how holy you think you are, or how long you've been on the journey, or how righteous you may think you've become, there are some things embedded in your life that hindered your walk with the Lord. It may be a stronghold of sin in your life. Uh, something that you're holding on to that you know you need to let go. Yes, that keeps you from a closer walk with the Lord. It may be a bitter attitude or an unforgiving spirit that keeps you hostage and restrains you from becoming the person of faith that you should be. It could be something out of your past that you're holding on to that you continue to struggle with day after day after day. So much so that it pulls you back from the bright future that God has placed before you. It's a stronghold that keeps you and that stands between you and all that God has for you. And before you can be what you ought to be and have what you ought to have, you've got to handle your stronghold. You've got to deal with your obstacles. Are you going to pray with me? You've got to overcome the strongholds in your life. Yes, sir. With the help of the Holy Spirit, there are three things, if I could get to the text, that I want to lift out uh, that will help and assist us in overcoming these strongholds in our lives. Are you going to pray with me? First of all, it takes confrontation to overcome strongholds. Yeah. Secondly, it takes confidence yeah. to overcome the strongholds. Right. And then finally, it takes conquests to overcome the strongholds in our lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it takes confrontation. It takes, I wish I had a prayer yeah. church in here. Yeah. It takes confidence and it takes conquests. Right. Here, here's the picture, a background. Uh, the children of Israel have already been freed from Egyptian bondage. Right. They've already gone through the Red Sea. Come on, somebody. Right. And they've already wandered in the wilderness for 40 years because of disobedience and disbelief. They've already now come through the Jordan on dry land. And they are now face to face with a stronghold and an obstacle that stands between them and what God had promised to them in the promised land. Are y'all gonna pray with me? And in order for them to get over this stronghold, they have to first understand that the overcome stronghold take confrontation. Yes, sir. Are you praying with me? Yes. Verse 13 through 15, the Bible says, as Joshua surveys Jericho, he has a strange and a miraculous encounter with a man who had a sword drawn. Yes, and and, 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 and what, what we find here is that this man, as we look at the text, is none other than the person of God. Uh -huh. And so if you're going to overcome strongholds, yeah. we've got to have a confrontation yeah. with the person of God. Yeah. Verse 14 says, the person identifies himself as the captain of the host of the Lord. Yeah. Last week we said that when in the book of Acts, that when the angel showed up in the jail to meet Peter, uh -huh. somebody was here last week, yeah. when the angel showed up, in the jail to free Peter from Herod's jail, from his prison. Uh, we said that some Bible scholar says that that angel of the Lord was God himself. That that was called what is called a theophany, 
where God shows up with arms and legs and hands and feet. I wish I had a witness here. In order that he might be able to relate to us so that we can relate back to him. Well, this time, it's not a theophany, but the old, the, the old say that this is a Christophany. In other words, it is the manifestation of the pre-Bethlehem uh, person of Jesus Christ. It's a Christophany. In other words, was, he comes face to face with Jesus Christ. Yeah. Anybody ever been face to face yeah. with Jesus Christ? Well, it's, it's really not that you really come face to face with him, but this is a picture of what salvation is all about. All right. Because if you are saying there was a point in time when you came into confrontation with Jesus Christ. Yeah. In other words, you have to make a decision about Jesus. Yeah. That's what salvation is all about. Or because you're so refined, or because you're so gifted, 